Hello everyone, today we read and comment the first paragraph of the 14th chapter of the 5th book of von Clausewitz von Kriege, its title being Living on the Inhabitants or on the Community, which is the same thing. The text follows. If we bear in mind that in a community consisting even as it does in great towns of consumers only, there must always be provisions enough to last for several days, we may easily see that the most densely populated place can furnish good and quarters for a day for about as many troops as there are inhabitants and for a less number of troops for several days without the necessity of any particular previous preparation. In towns of considerable size this gives a very satisfactory result because it enables us to subsist a large force at one point. But in smaller towns or even villages, the supply would be far from sufficient for a population of 3,000 or 4,000 in a square mile, which would be large in such a place, would only suffice to feed 3,000 or 4,000 soldiers. And if the whole mass of troops is great, they would have to be spread over such an extent of country at this rate as would hardly be consistent with other essential points. But in level countries and even in small towns, the quantity of, the, of those kinds of provisions, which are essential in war, is generally much greater. The supply of bread which a peasant has is generally adequate to the consumption of his family for several, perhaps from 8 to 14 days. Meat can be obtained daily. Vegetable productions are generally forthcoming in sufficient quantity to last till the following crop. Therefore, in quarters which have never been occupied, there is no difficulty in subs subsisting troops three or four times the number of the inhabitants for several days, which again is a very satisfactory result. According to this, where the population is about 2,000 or 3,000 per square mile, and if no large town is included, a column of 30,000 would require about four square miles, which would be a length of sight of two miles. Therefore, for an army of 90,000, which we have reckoned at about 25, um, excuse me, 75,000 com combatants, if marching in three columns continuous to each other, we should require to take up a front of six miles in breadth, in the case three roads can, could be found within that breadth. If several columns follow an, uh, one another to these cantonments, then special measures must be adopted by civil authorities and in that way there can be no great difficulty in obtaining all that is required for a day or two more. Therefore, if the above 90,000 are followed the day after by a like number, even these last would suffer no want. This makes up the large number of 150,000 combatants. Forage for the horses occasions still less difficulty, as it neither requires grinding nor baking, uh, and as there must be forage forthcoming in sufficient quantity to last the horses in the country until next harvest, therefore even where there is little st stall feeding, still there should be no want, only the deliveries of forage should, be s should certainly be demanded from the community at large, not from the inhabitants individually. Besides, it is supposed that some attention is of course paid to the nature of the country in making arrangements for a march so as not to send cavalry most into places of commerce and manufacturers and in two districts where there is no forage. The conclusion to be drawn from this hasty glance is, that, is therefore that in a moderately populated country that is a country of from 2,000 to 3,000 souls per square mile an army of 150,000 combatants may be subsisted by the inhabitants and community for one or two days within such a narrow space as will not interfere with its concentration for battle. That is, therefore, that such an army can be subsisted on a continuous march without magazines or other preparation. On this result were based the enterprises of the French army in the Revolutionary War and under Bonaparte. They marched from the Adige to the Lower Danube and from the Rhine to the Vistula with little means of subsistence except upon the inhabitants and without ever suffering want. As their undertakings depended on moral and physical superiority as they were attended with certain results and were never delayed by decision or caution, therefore their progress in their career, in the career of victory, was generally that of an interrupted march. If circumstances are less favorable, if the population is not so great, or if it consists more of artisans than agriculturalists, if the soil is bad 
the country already several times overrun, then of course the results will fall short of what we have supposed. Still, we must remember that if the breadth of the front of column is extended from 2 miles to 3, we get a superficial extent of country more than double in size, that is, instead uh, of 4, we command 9 square miles, and that this is still an extent which, in ordinary cases, will always admit of concentration for action. We see, therefore, that even under unfavorable circumstances, this method of subsistence will still be always compatible with a continuous march. But if a halt of several days takes place, then great distress must ensue if preparations have not been before made beforehand for such an event in other ways. Now, these preparatory measures are of two kinds, and without them a considerable army even now cannot exist. The first is equipping the troops with a wagon train by means of which bread or floor as the most essential part of their subsistence can be carried with them for a few, that is, for three or four days. If to this we add three or, or four days rations which the soldier himself can carry, then we have provided that w what is most indispensable in the way of subsistence for eight days. The second arrangement is that of a regular commissariat, which whenever there is a moment halt, uh, moment's halt gathers provisions from distant localities, so that at any moment we can pass over from the system of quartering on the inhabitants to a different system. Subsisting in cantonments has the immense advantage that hardly any transport is required and that it is done in the shortest time, but certainly it supposes a prior condition that cantonments can be provided for all the troops. So this paragraph illustrates the first mean of subsistence, that is the one of living essentially off the land, um, on the inhabitants in the community, which is the same thing. And it, it's quite punching because it gives a pretty plastic material dimension of um, just you know here it takes into consideration the essentially the density of the population um, and naturally the number of troops and the time they, they these have to cross and uh, it, it strikes in its clarity not just for what may seem the, the most striking conclusion that is even an army at up to 150,000 combatants by essentially marching full speed uh, in the strategic theater can be sustained without any other mean, uh, like another train of, of, of supplies or magazines and so on. But also, and especially, and this is what it makes really the strategic point, it is dramatically overlooked throughout all military history most of the times, is the imposing toll that stopping in a specific country, not necessarily uh, you know, um, even a poor one, a ravaged one, but, you know, for, for a prolonged time, such huge masses of troops naturally poses enormous problems, so that you have to move, at the end of the day, um, you have to keep these armies going. And this is matching together with the, as we've seen, the intensification uh, in the energy, and, and consequently also in the movement, not mm, quite proportionally so, but at least for Napoleonic warfare, say, there is an approximation towards that, a relation um, and, um, f and and the speed uh, and of, of of the same armies on, on, on the campaign right so the the question that uh, an army of such huge proportions never huge dimensions has never been seen in, in military history up to that point has and especially with all the logistical needs also of you know an advanced modern army with certain specific technologies and you know uh, force required can uh, and must move right Th there must be um, uh, towards this tendency towards absolute warfare a unnecessary speed that derives not much just for, for, from the logistical needs but specifically and overwhelmingly from the need to make that army move right towards an objective that is uh, you know proportionate to the size of that army that an army that naturally costs a lot not just for uh, as we've seen the supplies, but for politi politically, socially, in, in ways that are deeply intertwined with the, the, the broader spectrum of uh, the human, um, human, uh, human communities involved in here. And, and not only, all the systems, the systems of production and so on. So it's, it's clear when we read it 
living on the inhabitants or on the community, which is the same thing. Now, Foucault writes, if we bear in mind that in a community consisting, even as it does in great towns, of consumers only, so people that do not produce further stuff uh, in, in, in the, on the spot, there must always be provisions enough to last for several days. We may easily see that the most densely populated place can furnish food and quarters for a day or for about as many troops as there are inhabitants, at least, and for a less number of troops for several days without the necessity of any particu particular previous preparation. Mm -hmm. So, this is pretty much obvious. And in towns of considerable size, this gives a very satisfactory result because it enables us to subsist a large force at one point, but in smaller towns, or even in villages, this supply would be far from sufficient for a population of 3,000, 4,000 square mile, which would be large in, in such uh, space, would only suffice to feed 3,000, 4,000 soldiers. And if um, the wall mass of troops is great, they would have to be spread over such an extent of country at this rate as would hardly be consistent with other essential points. Right, so uh, here it touches basically the, the problem of population density, that is to say, you know, literally how many people and usually supplies that are, you know, at hand uh, are there in a certain amount of space. Uh, also, there is the problem of the cantonment in as much as the distance really for getting that food is about, right, so uh, the, the various sources of food could be uh, more scattered and this would require troops also to the, the discomfort of getting, going to get the food and so on, so it's obvious that the largest, the thickest the settlement is and the easier it is for maintaining these troops. Mm -hmm. um, so here we're talking specifically about centers, like commune towns, places where you can literally stay as in, in a point as a point. As as we've seen most of the times in, in the previous part of the of the chapter, in the introduction last uh, last time, we have have explained, right? There is a you know, that there is some strategic implications deriving from that, depending naturally on, on the character of the town, but we we'll, we have already seen that last time. Um, so here, just as far as specific centers are concerned, but von Clausewitz says in level countries, and even in small towns, the quantity of those kinds of provisions which are essential in war is generally much greater. Right, the supply of bread which a peasant has is generally adequate to the consumption of his family for several, perhaps from 8 to 14 days. Meat can be obtained daily. Vegetable productions are generally forthcoming in sufficient quantity to last till the following crop. Right? Therefore, in quarters which have never been occupied, there is no difficulty in subsisting troops f uh, three or four times the number of, ina of the inhabitants for several days, which again is a very satisfactory result. Right, so you understand that this would have, however, this entails uh, literally depriving the peasants of all what they have, you know, accumulated up to sometimes even the next crop or even longer time. Uh, but still, right, this doesn't matter because, you know, the fate of a country is, uh, it's very cynic to say. A country that naturally may not have, uh, you know, even the same... Uh, maybe it's not involved in, in, in the affair proper, maybe it's just, you know, an army transitioning to go fight somewhere else, still it's consuming that too, but um, it, it that's properly the, the preeminence that the, the military forces, political and social forces that brought that to happen as a, a cause of major force required. It's always been like that, but this is just to put in perspective the fact that uh, the brutality of war is finalized, it's aimed to something. Right, it's not simply saying, okay, well, you know, these are bastards because there's soldiers coming to fight, and what are they fighting for? Right, lots of strains are uh, required also uh, to, uh, you know, to communities that have obviously to, um, you know, to, to contribute in a way uh, for certain activities, and we all do because that's our own societies that either demand ours, you know, themselves for those resources of others, but then international relationships, how things go on f fundamentally are, you know, are, have a cost, so these things do not go kind of, you know, who cares, right? There is always a cost being paid. Um, 
but from Clausewitz, it's not a heartless man. He's simply telling us, you know, look that these, um, you know, we have the means fundamentally to, to, to make this uh, the, an army march uh, with this specific um, capacity for for days without being supplied otherwise, right? And this is important. And for Clausewitz says. Um, According to this, where the population is about two or three thousand per square mile, if no, lar uh, no large town is included, a column of thirty thousand would require about four square miles, which would be a length of side of two miles. Therefore, for an army of ninety thousand, which m we may reckon about seventy-five thousand combatants in marching three columns continuous to each other, we should require to take up a front of six miles in breadth, in case three roads could be found within that breadth. Right, so. Here, von Clausewitz is simply calculating um, how, uh, on the base of that demographic density that is fundamentally an average, uh, or at least an optimal average, considering this, as we've seen, this is a flat land, this is kind of agricultural area, it's not being ravaged yet. Uh, yeah, I mean, this this is fundamentally the size of, of, of a front, and uh, the literally the, the surface also the armies can occupy by simply passing by and consuming the local resources, you understand what the concept here is that this, these troops are even much uh, more numerous than the local populace, but there is enough stocks for you know for, from from those small, from that smaller population to feed all these soldiers for this naturally shorter amount of time. But that's how you can intensify the uh, you know you can maximize the uh, the profit, let's say, from occupying these lands and you know taking uh, stripping it of, of their of their food. Then von Clausewitz says, if several columns follow one another into these cantonments, then special measures must be adopted by the civil authorities. And in that way, uh, there can be no great difficulty in obtaining all that is required in a day or two uh, more. Uh, because uh, naturally, the, the, uh, the local authorities can arrange, m m rationalize, m uh, Equilibrate the channel, orientate more effectively this this supply system, you know, especially on the longer time, rather than leaving everything to the, you know, to the individuals when the, the soldiers come to, to build in their houses, just maybe to live to the next morning. Um, so this naturally has also to do, you know, the, as we were saying before, the larger I don't know settlement is in general, the, the more it's usually political and socially organized. So it's easier in that regard also to. You know, to to maximize the the, trans the transaction, let's call it in this way. Very often, as you understand from the army side, the point of the bayonet. But for the local authorities, okay, so okay, yeah, we we do it in an orderly fashion, can provide it in, in a more you know comfortable way. Um, then Foucault says, and this is interesting because naturally it's referred to the moments when uh, ever more is required. So that at that point, civil authorities also have some, uh, probably also some additional capacity, even to to keep the the local populace orderly, because this is no easy time for them. But anyhow, Foucault says, therefore, if the above ninety thousand are followed the day after by a like number, even these last would suffer no want. This makes up the larger number, one hundred fifty thousand combatants. Uh, it's lovely how mathematical this thing is, um, and for Clausewitz, saw it that you know from his, his direct experience, time after time, so he knew how the thing worked, right? It's interesting because this makes you understand it's not pure calculation; it's not a speculative um, calculation. It's exactly you know it derives. It's a description, a mathematical description of what happens all the time. You know he, I mean, not all the time, but the average time that this thing was seen, right? And this is how mostly during Napoleonic. Uh, during the Napoleonic era, uh, armies worked like work from every side, and 150,000 those is really a large number, and more of that later. Uh, Foucault says forage for the horses, and consider nobody had ever done this, right? At least in terms of um, literally of uh, as we've seen of modern supplies that, that require a lot, and these are imposing armies, not. Uh, I mean, armies of this kind in previous times couldn't be assembled, technically. Never think this, uh, the sources, when you read in ancient medieval times that 100,000 is act an actually, uh, you know, the actual number of an army. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, th there were no means to control them in that way at the time. 
but politically and socially more even more than than the nils from i mean on the on the field especially then for it says forage uh, i mean as unique mass forage for the horses occasions still less difficulty as it neither requires grinding nor baking and as there must be forage forthcoming in sufficient quantity to last the horses in the country until next harvest therefore even where there is little st uh, stall feeding still there should be no want only the deliveries of forage should certainly be demanded from the community at large not from the inhabitants individually right so even here right there's enough forage because that's normally stock when you know uh, in a certain period of the year and it's gonna last for a long time so the only problem he says it's mostly you know making it come from effectively from the uh, from the community that ha has it scattered the, in a way so um, and besides, for close says, it is supposed that some attention is, of course, paid to the nature of the country in May because the horses cannot be built so easily as the others. So, you know, f yeah, I mean, theoretically they can, but the question is that there is a more um, organization, uh, it's a, there is usually a more careful organization of the horses, right, uh, and for the men. Um, and besides, Foucault says, it is supposed that some attention is of course paid to the nature of the country making arrangements for a march so as not to send cavalry mostly in two places of commerce and manu manufacturers and in two districts where there is no forage. That is to say, yeah, I mean, consider altogether that cavalry you have to take, as we've seen, is very expensive, very costly. Um, cannot be replaced as easily um, and therefore you have to take into account every possible detail uh, you know a man can't find more easily certain uh, resources to leave the horse has uh, you know has as long as he's broke there um, but and um, uh, so ma not make the mistake from, from close it's um, Sent to 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 send the, hor the horses in a kind of commercial manufacturable area, you know, send it where there is forage, send it where you know that can uh, the horses can be fed. Because the horses really require a lot, but I mean a lot of food and and very specific one, right? So it can't be, you know, the, the, the thing can't be bypassed. Otherwise, the conclusion from Claude says to be drawn from this hasty glance is that therefore that in a moderately populated country, so average counter um, there is a counter from 2,000 to 3,000 souls per square mile an army of 150,000 combatants may be subsisted by the inhabitants and community for one or two days within such a narrow space as will not interfere with its concentration for battle that is therefore that such an army can be subsisted on a continuous march without magazines or other preparation that is to say just as far as you know the marching uh, is concerned yeah you in this moderately populated country you can make past 150,000 combatants you know on a normal day of march right without even magazines or other preparation things change of course um whether you know districts for example have to be concentrated for battle that as we've seen is or there is other imminent you know strategic reason for which they have to stop for example maybe um you know as far as the acceleration is concerned it's not a great deal or at least it becomes, but not much for the supplies that has to be required. But let's say there are, um, there are, sp and, and this is, these are, uh, these are not uh, properly optimal marches. But let's say for 150,000 men, we've seen how complicated it is to just make them move speedily at that. Um, uh, you know, the speed is kind of a maximum, it's kind of a roof. Um, so, but it's functional. It's what you expect from an army of that time to be. And and therefore this density this local well is, is enough just not to organize basically any kind of magazines or other supply prearranged supplies uh, in for it says uh, on this result we uh, excuse me were based the enterprises of the french army in the revolutionary war and under bonaparte they marched from the adige to the lower danube and from the rhine to the vistula with little means of subsistence except upon the inhabitants and without ever suffering want. And these were held campaigns across, as we've seen, uh, Central Europe that, you know, were, were crossed without particular strains in terms of, you know, needing supplies uh, for sustaining trip. No, they it went smoothly. 
uh, and these were the largest armies ever been put together. So, Foucault says, as their undertakings depend on moral and physical superiority, as they were attended with certain results and were never delayed by indecision or caution, therefore their progress in the career of victory was generally that of an uninterrupted march. Right, and this has not to do with supplies, uh, but properly with strategical matters. That is, uh, yes, you make an army marching speedily, but why? Even during, properly in the theater of war, right? Because you basically crush enemy, uh, you know, uh, an army after another, like Napoleon did in this circumstances. So he didn't have to stop, but probably would have even had the, the chance to stop. If not meeting the the big battle, that is exactly what he did, um, for this, you know, moral and physical superiority, that fundamentally uh, allowed this um, speedily move. So as if you know that the, here there was no positional warfare whatsoever, if not by stopping you know in a certain center where it was enough resources in that sense. Yes, but um, for the rest, everything went like from A to B without particular problems, yes, we had maybe a major battle in between, but without uh, a permanent concentration of troops in a land could not s that would be exhausted by that in the process, right? Everything passed. And this is not to be given for granted, as you understand, so that von Clausewitz takes into consideration where things go worse and says, if circumstances are less fi favorable, if the population is not so great, or if it consists more of artisans than agriculturalists, if the soil is bad, the country already several times overrun, then of course the results will fall short of what we have supposed. Still, we must remember that if the breadth of the front of a column is extended for, uh, from two miles to three, we get a superficial extent of country more than double in size. That is, instead of four, we command nine square miles, and that this is still an extent which, in ordinary cases, will always admit of concentration for action. We see, uh, therefore, that even under unfavorable circumstances, this method of subsistence will still be always compatible with a continuous march. That is to say, you don't have just to follow uh, the, the snake's head. right? You can split into various columns so that you can basically occupy that um, lateral uh, surface that still has enough resources. Yes, you split more the army, but technically you manage it to, to make it survive in um, in worse situations in in different uh, you know with, by by simply extending the the range of uh, the army's same size, mm -hmm. right? But the place where they cross because this is the point, you know, it's not a much how much you find there on the spot, but how much you can keep your army, uh, you know, cohes strategically that that may be a very impo you know imposing necessity in certain circumstances well just consider that in the worst situation if you really if the local land really can't make it to 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 uh, subsist to maintain this uh, this army uh, marching on the same trail right you can still split the trail right and uh, yeah you have to determine it yourself but once again this is in fact, what, what war is, you you are in charge. You, there is no pre-arranged way of... You, here it tells you of what you have to do in certain circumstances, but the, how much this is going to be, you have to calculate yourself. This is why this is not a deterministic thing, and the phone creek is not meant to be read like, you know, tell me what to do in terms of now. Uh, that you have to learn on your own. That, that That's not not having an answer. It's, it's exactly giving you the best answer you can ever receive. But still giving you some hint to say, okay, look, but, you know, you have to calculate it yourself, n given that normally things work like that, right? That the normal in board changes a lot, but there is still a, a balance, there is still a, um, an average that objectively has, that makes the theory of the art of war, as we're seeing here. Ben von Koswitz says, um, but, but if a halt of several days, so here it takes into consideration not the, the shortage of food for the continuous march, but ju just if an army has to stop for several days, then greatness, great distress must answer if preparations have not been made beforehand for such an event in other ways. Mm -hmm. 
Now, because of course you're gonna exhaust with that number of men, the local country, and men have to eat, right? It's not something you can't postpone more than much. So you must have prepared naturally rations, supply making come from somewhere else, uh, brought with you or whatever. So now these preparatory measures are two kinds, and without them, a considerable army even now cannot exist. Right? I mean, physically, this thing will melt away, literally. Um, and the first is equipping the troops with a wagon train, obviously, by means of which bread or floor, as the most essential part of their subsistence, can be carried with them for a few, that is, for three or four days. Mm -hmm. um, if to this we add three or four days rations which the soldiers himself can carry, then we have provided what is most indispensable in the way of subsistence for eight days. Mm -hmm. There's enough room for... And the second arrangement is that of a regular commissariat, which, whenever there is a moment to halt, gathers provisions from distant localities, so that at any moment we can't pass over from the system of quartering on the inhabitants to a different system. Right? That we will read in a, in a, a comment in another video. Subsisting uh, in cantonments has the immense advantage that hardly any, uh, any transport is required, and that it is done in the shortest time, but certainly supposes as a prior condition that cantonments can be provided for all the troops. Right, so this is pr pretty obvious, right? But honestly, how many times did you even think about this stuff? Right, if von Klovitz had not told you this, right, you could have found it somewhere else today, yes, but the question is, what were the odds for you to even wonder? And, and, and if you, th this makes you understand, if you were ever to study a Napoleonic campaign, if you this this simple numbers can give you a pretty spot on um, indication, right? In spite of the broader historical difficulties, but you know of what the the accept, the strains, the extremes of this um, local exploitation could be in you know lacking other means. And this is the beauty of the von Krieger because it literally reflects the pattern that really exists in what you're studying in history, and you can confrontate with what was in fact real. Hmm. All right, so for now we stop it here. I just hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it. Otherwise, leave a like or subscribe to my channel if you're interested in my upcoming content. And for now, I thank you heartily for listening to me. I wish you a nice time and see you next time. Bye.